Hey everybody, welcome. I am Kathy with Mom to Mom, and it's a group that I lead every Thursday morning at Christ United Methodist Church. And since we're not able to meet because we're all home quarantined uh, for the coronavirus, I thought I'd do some Facebook Live post and then put this on YouTube and then we will see how that goes and see if it's of any help to to anyone. So if if you're watching, give me a greeting, let me know you're there and I'd love to welcome you. Good morning, Stacy. I'm so glad you're joining in this morning. I hope your kids are all well. And hey, Marcy, good to see you out there this morning. Um, I hope that you um, all are staying safe at home. Hey, Janet, good to see you too. So glad that you can tune in. I know others will be joining us as we go along. So uh, I hope that you all will find this helpful, that you will give me some feedback and let me know what things that you, that you need. Good morning, Haley. And then uh, that will help me as I prepare the, less, the, the lessons. And hello, Leslie, good to see y'all. I miss you all so much. I'm so sorry we can't be together face to face, but I hope this will prove helpful. Our children's ministry will be posting a Facebook Live each week, and Mary Beth Hammett, our children's director, is going to post some things that we hope that you will enjoy doing with your children. And Cameron DeRee, who is our director of preschool, is going to be sending things out to you. She would like your feedback. She wants to know if you would like to have information sent to you uh, frequently, like how often, once a week, is that good? Do you want her to send you videos? Or do you want to read stories to your children? Do you want extra activities? And you can email her and uh, let her know, and I'll post that below. Good morning to the rest of you who are joining in. My, my group's there, Lauren, Adrian. Uh, so good to see y'all. And so uh, uh, Cameron's email address is actually ChristTownDIR at gmail.com. And I see she's joined us this morning too. Well, let's look at our objective today. I want us to talk this morning about behavior patterns that you are seeing in your children. And we're going to group those, and then we're going to see what character traits they center around. Because if you can determine the character trait, that's going to help you with the discipline. And isn't that what we want? We want to know how to discipline our kids so that they would will go in the right direction. So we, I know that since you've been home with your kids for, for a few days, you may be seeing some patterns in their behavior. And so I hope that you've made a list of them. And if you haven't, go ahead and start thinking about that as we're talking. And you can just do this with one child or, or you can do it with, with all of them, however you want. But just for our purposes today, just pick one child and think about the, the misbehavior that you've seen uh, recently that, that you know you need to address. And so we're going to make a, a list of those. Now, I want to, to make sure we're getting this idea that you're just getting a glimpse, just this little bitty picture, this window into their behavior. And we're not saying that this is who the child is completely. <laughs> I see Leslie says, let's talk about a bossy six-year-old. And so we'll look at some of the character traits of a bossy six-year-old if you would like to. So we're going to, to look at uh, grouping, first of all. Now, so I'm going to give you an example. And so this is how you look at patterns. So we're going to look at the behavior of a boy and we'll call him Sonny. So let's look at Sonny. Now, here's what Sonny's doing. He is consistently uh, resisting the chores he's supposed to be doing around the house. He is not following through with all of his homework assignments, and I know you mamas are, are having to uh, figure out how to do homework and you, uh, you know, you don't have a degree in education. You have no, you're at a loss. And so you have a child now, this Sonny is not completing his work at school. And then he's giving you a hard time every time you ask for his help around the house. He's giving you a hard time. So let's look at those three things, this resistance to chores, 
uh, that he is expected to do. He's giving you pushback every time you ask him to do some kind of work and he's not getting his work, he's not completing his schoolwork. So those areas, does anybody have an idea of how you would group those around a character trait? What is going on in his heart, in Sonny's heart, in his character? And you think about that, I've used one word several times. I've used work several times. It seems as if Sonny has a problem with his work ethic. And that could go to other uh, character traits also. He's not persevering. So perseverance is, is a problem for him. He may get started, but he's not seeing something through. Uh, he, he is, his determination is lacking. He's not determined to get these things done. And then, of course, the bottom line is he is not obeying and he's not honoring you. And so you see, you can group those behaviors and find several different character traits that are at, at fault there. And that's where you want to hone in on the, the discipline and what you say. Now, we're going to look at how to do that in just a minute. Now, let's look at the next example. And that is uh, for a girl. We're going to call her Precious. So Precious is mean to her brother. Precious makes fun of everybody. Uh, she makes fun of people at their expense. She is uh, one who wants to make jokes and she plays tricks on people even if she doesn't know them. And she's doing this to get a laugh. So can you group those into some character traits that you might be able to identify. So again, let's look at what she's doing and what, what's missing in Precious' life because she is doing these things. She's mean to brother. She makes fun of people. She plays tricks on people, uh, even if she doesn't know them, just so that she can get a laugh. What is she lacking? It's one of those traits I've talked about many times. It's an important trait for children to have, for all of us to have. She doesn't have compassion. Got that? Give me a thumbs up and respond to me a little bit if you are, if you're tracking with me on these things. Just send me, send me an emoji of whatever. Give me a, a wow emoji, a thumbs up or whatever, just so I get uh, some kind of feedback that, that we're on the same page here. So that what, what we see is two children, Sonny, and Sonny is, uh, doesn't have this good work ethic. He's, he is not responding in the area of work and doing chores. And then we have Precious, and she's making fun of people. She's mean to her brother because she does not have compassion. So let's take Precious. So she um, it, it doesn't have compassion. So now what do you do? Isn't that the question you need help with? What do you do once you identify the behavior patterns and then you get the, the you put it together with the, the character trait, then what do you do about it? Is that what you want to know? Uh, let me hear from you. Uh, okay, yeah, give me some thumbs up. That's what you want to know. So let's look at what we do with Precious. She uh, is having a hard time with understanding other people have feelings. And so we have to work with Precious on feelings. She's not considerate of other people. And so you begin to talk to her about her own feelings. What are her feelings when, it, when she uh, gets somebody makes fun of her? And so you work from that perspective. How does it feel to her when somebody makes fun of her? How does it feel when someone is mean to you? I would also use personal examples. I would tell about a time in my life when somebody hurt my feelings. You know, I have examples in my own life. I remember when I was probably in third or fourth grade, I was on the playground and there was a group of girls and they had gathered up in a circle and they uh, were all talking and whispering. And when I walked by, they, they kind of looked my way and then they began to whisper again and they began to talk among themselves. And then they turned and they ran away from me. That hurt my feelings. I didn't know how to process that uh, because this was a group of girls that I thought were my friends, but they clearly were not. They did not want to be around me, and that hurt my feelings. And so I would share that. Now, you can see that 
that happened a long, long time ago, decades ago, and I still remember it. And so now I, I'm over that. <laughs> you know, I'm not holding grudges or whatever, but I want to make the point that these things that happen to children can last a, a while in their memory. And you want Precious to understand that things she's doing to other people hurt and that it, it may stay with them a while. And so by you giving that example, uh, then you are going to have to, to uh, be vulnerable and open and share with them so they'll get it. And then I would probe with Precious to tell examples from her own life. When did somebody hurt you? So I, I would probe there because we want her to develop passion. And we also want to talk to her about humor. And, uh, oh yeah, Janet, thanks for that response. Memories can last for a long time and it's important to teach our kids that. Thank you, Janet. Um, we want to tell them also that humor can be offensive to people. You know, we need to teach kids what is appropriate humor and what is not. And so Precious needs to learn that. Do you see what, what I'm trying to point out here is that instead of just honing in on stop doing that, that's not nice, quit it. We are so mean to people. Why do you always hurt feelings? Because <laughs> let me know, is that what you tend to do? Oh, send me some feedback on that, mamas. Is that what you tend to do? You just hone in on stop don't quit cut that out is that what we tend to do uh, i think probably so but instead of doing that we want to look at what at the cause for that behavior so we're trying to teach uh teach precious that so you might want to do some activities with her i would especially during this time if you have a child who is uh, dealing with some compassion issues then do some projects. I would do some projects that focus on other people, and I would be talking about other people. Isn't it sad that some people cannot even get out and go to the grocery store? Why don't we write some cards and, and cheer somebody up today? And what we're doing at our church is we are receiving those cards. If you want to write uh, cards to shut-ins and those who are, are totally isolated, then you can write those cards, drop them off in our church office. We have an envelope where you can put the cards and we will deliver them uh, to, to those people or we'll mail them. So see, again, you're trying to develop compassion. So those are two examples about uh, how to group the behavior and then how to determine what character trait. So grouping this behavior is really very freeing uh, because it's providing you some perspective. Now I'm going to encourage you to do that with your children over the next few few weeks as you are spending more time with them because let's let's just call this what it is this is enforced child parent time <laughs> you are having to be with them more than ever and so you you want to use this time to figure out the pattern then choose the character trait and then work on the character trait now remember parenting is not easy this is hard and it's going to take time but Oh, the rewards of doing this are going to be so much better than if you just keep harping on the children. So that is going to be uh, getting this good perspective. Now, um, I want us to also uh, look at um, the, the list uh, of character traits that I've given you. Uh, I'll post these also, but I've given you some to think about, and they are obedience, honor, perseverance, attentiveness, patience, self-discipline, gratitude, and then I've just mentioned work ethic and compassion. So those are some to be thinking about. Now let's look at some ways to, um, to deal with uh, an offense. So let's uh, take time to relate the character quality that to the child that the child needs to develop. So you might say this to a teenager. You might say, after you've identified the trait, I kind of sense there is an ungrateful spirit. I sense that you're not really grateful for some things. And at the same time, you continually want me to sacrifice. And then you would follow up with, I don't mind help, helping you, but I'm going to say no this time. 
And then I'm going to watch and see if your gratitude increases for the things that I'm already doing for you. You got that? Now let's look at this again. You identify the trait and you call it out. You tell the child, I'm sensing that you're not really grateful. Now remember, tone's real important because how many times have you actually said, you are so ungrateful? <laughs> See how different that sounds? You want to, 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 to address your tone. So you want to say something, and, I'm, and this is a, a pointed conversation. This is not a conversation off the fly. Uh, this is an intentional conversation, one-on-one, -on -one, you're sitting down, having this conversation. And you say, I am sensing that you have an ungrateful spirit. I, I'm sensing that you're, you're not really grateful. That's just what I am gathering here. And so you uh, then address the fact that what you're seeing is they're not grateful, but they expect you to continue to sacrifice. And so you say then, here is where you set the boundary that you say, you know, when, when uh, you want me to do things, I really try to accommodate you. And so what you say is, but I'm, I'm not going to this time. I'm going to say no. And then I'm going to watch and I'm going to see if I see a spirit of gratitude over the next period of time, don't give them an end date to this. Remember, don't give an end date. I'm going to see if gratitude increases for the things I'm already doing. And then you wait it out. Wait it out and see. And then you're going to compliment as they begin to respond. And then uh, you can move forward with um, you know, whatever restrictions you may have put them under. Uh, but, but you're not going to be doing the things that they expect you to do uh, when it comes to um, taking advantage of you. All right, now let's say you have a preschooler. And so you're working on self-control. Anybody got that issue going on, self-control? How about that? Give me a response. Self-control. How many are dealing with kids that are struggling with self-control? Doesn't matter the age, just any kid. How about some emojis? Uh, some thumbs up or whatever. Uh, kids deal with self-control. This is across the board. So let's say that you're working with a preschooler on self-control. That means waiting without getting upset or angry. So you need to define it. You know, what is it that they are doing? They are getting really angry and they uh, are, are getting upset. They don't want to wait it out. So we have to define it. We have to explain it. See, self-control is a character trait. Yes, a character trait. I'm seeing a lot of you responding to that, that you're having issues with that. And, and I get that. Um, <laughs> hey, we as adults sometimes have problems with self-control, don't we? And so you tell them what it is, waiting without getting angry or upset. And then you address it. This is how it looks. And this is what I'm expecting from you. So you, you see, you, you tell them what it is and then you give examples and talk them through it. Have them give you feedback. Can you remember a time when you got angry or when you were got when you got upset when you had to wait? Ask them to share that with you because they need to identify, they need to relate. They need to understand what you're talking about. And again, remember, this is a conversation you're having one-on-one. -on -one. You're sitting down and having the conversation with them. And so you, you, this is not off the fly. This is instead of you're saying, why do you always get angry? Why, why do you always get upset? You are so impatient. We begin the name calling. We tag them out on things. Uh, and we get, we get upset ourselves. This is instead of that. You've identified the pattern. They don't have self-control. And so we're going to work on self-control. And so we, we tell them what it is. Once again, we tell them what it is. We ask them to identify times when they have not practiced self-control. Again, if you have another example uh, from your own life, even as an adult or as a child, it doesn't matter. Just give some example. Uh, if you have another example from a, a book you've read, books are really wonderful tools to use here and find an example from a book. Again, this requires some homework on your part, but we know this is the area we have to get a, a handle on. It's self-control. It's not just the individual acts of misbehavior because the way we've been dealing with that is we've just dealt with 
yelling and telling them stop and without really addressing the character issue. Oh, I'm seeing somebody has arguing over pineapple chunks. <laughs> oh yeah, that happens. Those little things that drive everybody crazy in the home, arguing over really, really silly things. Uh, so they're arguing and getting angry and upset. They're not practicing self-control. And so you tell them what it is and then you say, now for a while, you're not gonna be able to, and then you fill in the blank. You need to figure out what what, uh, what it is that you can restrict them on. And, and you know, we're looking for currency. What is most important to them? And, and then those are going to be removed until you can see an improvement in self-control. They have to know how that's going to look. So then you have to coach them on what are behaviors that indicate self-control. Uh, there are so many books out there. Go online. I mean, you, you're not able to go out and buy books. I think Amazon is still delivering, hopefully. Uh, but find uh, resources of examples of self-control so that you can tell them, tell them how it looks. You know, I use, I teach this uh, all the time to adults that we have to practice self-control. And, and here's what I teach often is God has given us something that he hasn't given all the um, and other animals in the kingdom, and that's this ability to pause. We, we take advantage of the little gap God gave us so that we don't have to respond immediately. Teach, start teaching a preschooler that. Um, and so here's, give them this, this idea that when they are disappointed with news that you've shared with them or they're in this period of waiting, ask them to, when, when they get information they don't like and they're ready to lash out, ask them to do something physical that will help them. For preschoolers, have them hold their hands together, uh, put their hands in some position, do something physically uh, so that they will not lash out and they will not respond and tell them you'll be looking for that behavior. Uh, teach them other words to use when they are dis disappointed. And so uh, I'm seeing some of you respond about this self-regulation. That's important, isn't it? Preschoolers need to learn to how to self-regulate. We begin to teach them when they're little. I see that uh, Alicia is saying she has a two-year-old and we want to teach them how to self-settle when they get upset after you choose uh, to do this or that and they're disappointed. Two-year-old's hard. They're, that's still at that age where they can be uh, set in time out. We can still do time out with a two-year-old. Uh, they can still go to a special place you've designed and you've designated for them. Uh, when they start to lose control, they have to go and sit there. I would make sure they look you in the eye when you tell them uh, this is not acceptable, this is not appropriate, and you are going to have to sit out until you can get control. And so you have a special place for them to sit. For some children, that needs to be in a separate room. For little bitty ones like that, it just needs to be in the room, but it needs to be separated because we're trying to get them to self-regulate, self-control, and at two, they still have to take time out. As they get older, they can uh, have more conversations with you about how to self-regulate, how to get control of their anger, and how not to be upset. So give, give those little ones something to physically do. Well, you might even need to do that with an older one, but you're teaching them to take advantage of the pause before they respond. It's a lesson all of us can use. Uh, let's say we have an elementary child uh, who doesn't have self-control and they run into the room and they immediately start talking, even though you may be on the phone, you may be talking to another child, you may be engrossed in some activity, but they come in as if nobody else is in the room, that they are uh, the only ones in the universe. And so that you, what we want to do is to teach them that this world is not revolving around them and that they cannot just come into a room and expect to have your full attention. And so you're teaching them to come into the room to see what's going on so that you don't interrupt others. Now, this is a great one to use in uh, practicing and modeling and role playing. 
I would do that with the elementary age. They, they, they enjoy that, they like to role play. It's a really effective teaching method. And so with other self-control ideas, you can do this kind of role play. So you say to, to this child, I want you to go uh, out of the room and when you come in, uh, I will either be involved in something, I'll be in, either on the phone or maybe I'm just sitting here and you have to decide if, if you can interrupt or if it's okay to begin, you have to make that decision. And so then you stage it. So they come in and let's say that you pretend to be on the phone and they come in and then you have to figure out what you want them to do while you are engaged in something so that they do let you know, I need to talk to you or whatever, but they're not just standing there stomping their feet and waving at you and trying to completely distract you. You teach them what your expectations are. So uh, those are some examples of uh, what to do in those certain scenarios so that you're addressing the character issue. Uh, I hope that what I have been sharing are um, ideas that, um, that you follow this pattern, that you identify the behavior, you, you group them, you put it, uh, connect it with a, a character trait, and then you figure out how to teach that trait. Now then, I'm going to wind up in just a minute with a, a, a follow-up on, on this and what to do as next steps. But I also would love if you would like to, uh, for me to address any specific issues in this, to, to post that or when this session is over, to give me feedback on the kinds of topics you want me to address. Do you want me to hone in on some of these some more? Uh, give me some, uh, some direction on that because I, I'm, I just want to do whatever is helpful for you. So I want us to close with this idea of affirming the child's care character because that's what this is about. We're looking at character and not just their behavior. And so we want our children to grow up with these good positive character traits. These are these are godly traits. And so we want to make sure that we are affirming those. And so after, let's look at what affirmation means. Uh, sometimes we think that when we are in the habit of thanking children for for doing things that that is also admiration, but they're very different. And so I want us to make sure we know what it is. When you are th thanking children for choosing well, uh, that focuses on the behavior. And we need to do that. That's really important. When they have chosen well, then you need to acknowledge it. But let's take this one step further and let's use some admiration because admiration goes to character. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. We want to be grateful, we want to show thankfulness for their behavior, but we want to give admiration for character traits. For example, let's say Sonny is now taking out the garbage because you have had this conversation about his behavior and his not completing chores and not completing tasks. And so now Sonny has taken out the garbage. And so you want to thank him for that. And that's, that's important to do. But then let's go another step and say, I like that you did, did such a thorough job. I admire you for that. I admire the fact that you got up without me, prompt, me prompting you to do that. You see the difference? We want to thank them for the behavior and then start building in admiration for character traits. And that's what's gonna stick for a lifetime. Don't you love it when somebody gives admiration comments to you? I admire the way you. And so we want to start doing with that. That recognizes character and it will help them to get an idea of the big picture. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, give me some feedback. I really want to do the things that uh, you need. Um, and I hope this proves uh, very good. Oh, back to, to uh, Leslie and the bossy child. Uh, I would get some of those behaviors listed out and then I would look at what character trait. It seems to me that if she's become bossy, she's not honoring you. And so we want to go back to honor. Remember the twofold job description for a child. I know you're all saying that because I've taught this so much. You're, you're saying the twofold description is to what? Y'all tell me. Come on, post. What, what two things 
are, are, are every child expected to do. It's the biblical job description for our children. They are to, first of all, obey, and second, yes, honor. That's what our kids are supposed to do. So our bossy six-year-old um, is not doing those. Thank you all for those good responses. They, we must teach them to honor and obey. Those are the two most important character traits because that's the job description. And so let's make sure that we're focusing on that. Bossy six-year-old needs to do that, needs to honor. And so that's, where, that's, the, that's the trait that you begin to work on. Oh, I have such smart students. Everybody's getting 100 for that. Thank you so much. Well, I love you guys, and uh, let me know again what you need. Um, and I hope to see you guys next week. Thank you so much.